Can you please? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, we'll start now. Okay. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So we were discussing about that. Yes, when uh, Kalidas, you know, he was he was basically just always be on the remnants of the devotees, and we just heard that how he uh, took the remnants, the food that is being offered, and uh, of Jadu Thakur, and then also he. Um, uh, you know, took the dust of the lotus feet. Now, what is this actually reminences? So that point I was discussing where unfortunately we all got cut off. So uh, the reminence doesn't only mean the food. You know, this has to be very, very clear that the reminence doesn't mean just, just the food that is being offered to the Lordships or to the Vaishnavas and you are honoring that. Mm. It doesn't limit itself to the uh, food part. So there is a very beautiful verse in Srimad Bhagavatam. Toya upabhokta shrak gandha vaso alankara charchitaha uchishta bhojano dasa sthava mayam janayena thi jayamehi. So what this verse talks about is that actually Uddhava is talking to Krishna and he is saying toya upabhokta means toya means oh my lord yours you know, by you upabhokta bhokta means to enjoy so something that is being enjoyed by you is actually known as the remnant so it's not just the food it is anything that is enjoyed by krishna or by Srimati radharani then that becomes the uh, the remnants and then he mentions that for example shrug Shrak means the garlands, the garlands that is offered to the lordships. When we get a chance to take the garlands, we should really accept it that Krishna has worn this garland and this garland is the mercy of Krishna. Right, so we should accept it as prashad. So, what is actually this prashad? Because normally people take it prashad as just the food remnants, that is not prashad, actually means mercy. Right? That is what the meaning of prashad is. Literally, prashad means mercy. Mercy that is flowing from the lordships to us, to the conditioned souls. So he's saying shrak means the garlands that is being uh, honored by the Supreme Lord. If we, are, if we get a chance to take those garlands, that becomes prashad, right? That becomes a mercy. That's mercy, actually, right? Then gandha. Then the gandha means the, the smell, the oils, the, the fragrance that is being offered. Because normally, you know, you must have seen in the in temples when during Narsingha Aarti, there is offered, you know, this on the bud, it is offered some incense, sorry, some oil, oil, some fragrant oil is offered with flower. And that oil, then everybody takes it on their hand. So you, we should smell it. And we should just, you know, have it on our forehead, on our heart. We should rub it. So uh, this is how we accept that gandha. So that gandha is also a mercy. That's also a prashad. Then vasa, then we get the garments. Sometimes, you know, we get the maha garments on some special occasions. The garment, garments, the garments or the ornaments, alankar, that is being worn. You know, sometimes in the temple, you know, they give you some worn out uh, ornaments that uh, the lordships cannot accept it anymore. So that becomes prashad and it is given out to the devotees. So everything becomes prashad. So you should normally, we should very, uh, you know, humbly we should accept that as the remnants that is coming from the Lordship. Then again, he's saying, Uchishta Bhojana, Uchishta Bhojana, again, the, the food that is being offered to the Lordships. Then he's saying, uh, what does it do? Tava Mayam Jayamiye. When we accept all these remnants 
from the Supreme Lord. Then what happens? Tava mayam. Then we cross over. We conquer. Jaya me. Jaya me. Then we conquer the uh, illusory energy. We cross over the maya. Because Krishna says, maya etam tarantite. That you can cross over that maya only when you surrender unto me. So when we accept all these prashad, then, you know, we are able to cross over this illusory energy. So this point, I just want to make sure that, you know, the prashad don't limit it. Don't limit it only to the food. It can be anything. It can be the garland. It can be the oil, the fragrance. Mm -hmm. It can be the ornaments. It can be the outfit of or the, you know, the garments or we, it, it can only be an incense, you know, when the arti goes on, then we offer incense, we offer deep, we offer flower, we offer cloth, we offer water. So that all becomes prashad. That's why, you know, we take arti, we take that incense, then we smell that flower and uh, that water is, you know, it's sprinkled on everybody's head. So it becomes prashad, it becomes mercy. And definitely food is there. Definitely when uh, we, uh, we honor the prashad, the food uh, that is being uh, touched by the lotus lips of, of the divine couple, it becomes prashad. So this point, you know, I really want to uh, clear it out. So that's why I brought up this verse that don't limit prashad only to the food item. It can be anything. But then actually what happens? What happens when we take this prashad? When especially when the food we take or the, uh, you know, the oil we smell or the like uh, the garments that we take or the garlands that we smell and we hold. Actually, what happens is the transformation of heart takes place. So this is, you know, we have to understand the transformation of our heart takes place when we accept the remnants the, anything that is being offered to their lordships. So especially when we take prashad, because here we saw that how Kalidas was so much into taking the remnants of the food that is being honored by the Vaishnavas. He wants to eat those remnants. So what actually happens? Why, you know, always we have this is gone as the prashad mission, right? It's a, mm -hmm. everybody wants to eat uh, everybody that actually is gone is into this prashad. So why it is, you know, what actually happens? It is said that, you know, when we take the food that is being honored by the Supreme Lord, and when we get a chance to honor that food, first of all, we don't eat that food, okay? Because that's not an ordinary spice dal rice sabzi that we normally, you know, we can get it in anybody's non-devotees or materialistic people's home. No, this becomes a prashad now because now Krishna has accepted and once Krishna accepts the matter becomes spiritual for example you buy an apple from the market so what happened when you buy an apple it's merely an apple it's made up of matter right and everybody buys it materialistic people also buys and a devotee will also buy what materialistic people will do will take that matter and will eat it right so Body will get nourished. No doubt about it. Body is going to get nourished because you are eating something healthy. You are eating an apple. So, but what happens when a devotee takes that apple? The devotee very nicely, you know, will wash that apple, will peel that apple, will cut that apple and very, you know, nicely he will offer it to the lordships. So once that apple, the matter, when it is offered to the lordships, and Krishna tastes that apple. And that saliva from Krishna's mouth touches that apple, right? Now, when it happens, now this apple is no more a matter. It has become spiritualized. Now, the spirit has entered into that apple. So when we eat that, when we honor that prashad, which is being honored by Krishna first, which is being offered to Krishna first, when we honor that prashad, the body do gets nourished, no doubt about it, but there is a great transformation of the heart that happens. 
it is said that all our karmic reactions are burned when we honor prashadam. That's why Prabhupada says that ISKCON is prashadam religion. Please, off, if the, you know, the chanting doesn't work, the philosophy doesn't work, then yes, the prashadam will work and it work miracles. I don't know about all of you, but I am the live example sitting in front of you where I can say that prashadam works miracles, you know, it works miracles. Every time to all the people, you cannot explain the philosophy, you know, sometimes it goes on the top of your head. You cannot uh, force anybody to chant because chanting people need to get some taste, you know, they are not always ready to accept chanting. But once you give prashadam, and preaching also doesn't help, you know, you cannot preach to your relatives, your parents, your friends, you know, all the time you cannot because they have seen you in their journey. So they might not accept what you are saying. But once you give them prashadam, you know, the food that has been offered to the lordships, well, it works miracles. Yes, conviction is required, but prashadam, that is the food that has been offered to the Lord, even if somebody eats without conviction, a little transformation of the heart will happen will happen without knowing even if we've served them prashadam the transformation of the heart will happen maybe not in this lifetime maybe in the another lifetime but definitely it's going to get some credits to the devotees or to the to the people you know those who are accepting that prashadam so what actually happens is that when we take that uh, prashad when we take that remnants of food then yes, the body do get nourished, but at the same time, our prarabd, our aprarabd, all our karmas also gets destroyed. This is not some, you know, exaggeration that I'm saying, but it is through the shastras. It is said that uh, what happens when you sow a seed? When you sow a seed, definitely if, if it gets proper sunlight and proper water and the proper fertile soil, the seed will grow into a sapling, right? It's, it's normal. It's normal phenomena. So it will grow. But if you fry that seed and you give a fertile soil, you give a proper sunlight, you give a proper water, but still, do you think that that, that seed will fructify? No, that seed will not fructify. Why? Because now the seed has been fried. So you cannot accept, expect any sapling to grow from that seed. So similarly, when we honor prashadam, when we honor the food remnants that is being offered to the Lord, then all our seed, the propensities, the propensities of committing any sinful activities, that seed, that beja gets fried. So no matter how much fertile soil or how much a conducive environment we give to that seed, that seed will not fructify. That seed gets destroyed. So that means when we honor the prashadam, what happens is the propensity to commit sinful activities gets destroyed. We don't get further taste in committing. Uh, any kind of sinful activity. So this is what it happens. This is why we say the prashadam works like miracles, you know. And uh, so this is, you know, what I want to share about that. What's the importance of uh, why, you know, he, that uh, Kalidas was so much into, uh, you know, he was so much into honoring prashadam, of, sorry, the remnants that is being offered by the Vaishnavas. Now, this is what is about prashad, that is the food. Again, you know, it's not only food, we have already discussed, it can be anything that has been accepted by the Lord. Now comes the dust of the lotus feet, because remember when Jadu Thakur went back to his home, what he did, he smeared the dust on, the lot on his head. Now, this dust of the lotus feet of the Vaishnavas is also very, very important and very, very helpful in our spiritual journey. We should really 
you know, whenever we get a chance, we should always take the dust of the lotus feet of the great Vaishnavas, of the pure devotees. Now, what does it mean taking the dust of the lotus feet? Do we really take the dust of the lotus feet? You know, the dust is always there, right, on the, on the feet. Do we really accept it? Yes, we do. This is very, very true. We should accept the dust of the lotus feet of the great Vaishnavas. But at the same time, it also has some figurative meaning also. Yes, literal meaning is taking the dust. Yes, it is dust only and we should accept it. But there is a figurative meaning also that we should always follow the instructions of the great Vaishnavas. Taking the dust of the lotus feet of the great Vaishnavas is literally, yes, figuratively follow the instructions that is being given to us by those great, sincere, pure Vaishnavas. We should follow their instructions. This is very, very important. It's, it's not only that we just take the dust, but it is also important that we follow the instructions. This is also very, very important. Because, you know, we know that especially when we serve our spiritual master, there is a Vapu Seva and there is a Vani Seva. Vapu Seva is great. It's, it's good. You know, it's just like taking a jet plane onto our uh, back to Golokadham. It's just like taking a highway, you know, that's how the Vapu Seva is. But, uh, you know, how long the Vapu can stay in this material world? You know, after all, the Vapu has to leave. So what is left is the Vani, is the instructions. So that's why it is said that Vani is more important because you cannot 100% rely on Vapu Seva. And not everybody gets a chance to do Vapu Seva. But at the same time, Vapu Seva is important. It's, it's really great. It's really great if we get a chance to do a Vapu Seva to our spiritual master or to our great Vaishnavas or to the pure devotees. But at the same time, the Vani Seva, what is left is the Vani, right? The instructions. So when we follow the instructions, it is as good as serving those Vaishnavas. So following the instructions of the spiritual master of the pure devotee is also very, very important. And in this regard, I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm remembering one of the past times somebody shared with me of uh, uh, Ramanujacharya. You know, Ramanujacharya had a very, very dear servant and his name was Ramadas. And... Uh, Ramanujacharya was teaching Sanskrit, some Vedic philosophies to, you know, few of his students. There were around 100 of the students were there. But uh, one of his very, very dear servant was Ramadas. But Ramadas was not at all interested in learning all those Sanskrit or some great philosophies, you know. So what he was doing was he was simply humbly serving Ramanujacharya by cooking and serving and washing his clothes, massaging. You no, know, he was doing all the Vapu Seva that he could do for Ramanujacharya. Now these, all the other uh, people, all the other disciples of Ramanujacharya, they were into this that, wow, you know, they were pretty really puffed up that we are so great, you know, we are learning these Shastras, we are learning all these Vedic injunctions, and we are learning this Sanskrit, which is definitely on a very high level. But this Ramdas, you know, he's always engaged in some menial services to his spiritual master, Ramanujacharya, because he would go to the river, he'll wash the clothes, he'll nicely dry them and you know anyway he'll take care of everything for Ramanujacharya now once what happened uh, all these disciples of Ramanujacharya were there in that assembly and they were very keen to learn you know this Sanskrit and this Vedic injunctions but Ramanujacharya what he did he called one of his disciples and he told that go and call Ramadas and then uh, they were thinking Okay, but you know, what's the need? What he will do? He has no business here. But anyway, Ramanuja told that, no, you all should go and please call him. And they all searched for him, but he was in the river, you know, on the river bank, he was sitting and he was nicely washing the clothes of Ramanujacharya. And they call him and uh, 
because it was the orders of his Gurudev, so he just came in. And then Ramanujacharya told Ramdas that today somehow I'm not feeling well, so I want you to give class. And everybody was shocked that this person have no idea about anything. He doesn't know anything about all these Vedas, these this injunctions and this Sanskrit. He has never been, you know, in this class. And now, you know, Ramanujacharya wants him, first of all, they thought that he wants him also to attend the class. And that's also very bewildering to them. But now on top of that, you know, Ramanujacharya is saying that, let him give the class. But Ramdas said, that I cannot do Gurudev, I don't know anything. But Ramanujacharya said, no, I want you to go and sit on the Vyasasana and give class and teach everybody. And that's what he did it. Ramdas sat and hold and behold to the, you know, for everybody who was present, he gave a fantastic class on Sanskrit and all this Vedic injunctions. And that proves, you know, mukham karoti vachalum, pangum langayate giram. It's not just a matter of saying this verse. We should have faith in this verse that, yes, I am no one to speak. You know, if I think that, oh, I have read those Shastras and I know each and in and out of everything, well, it's the break time for us because we have no eligibility, no qualification whatsoever to speak something about Krishna, right? It's only through the mercy of Gurudev that we are able to speak. Mukam karoti vachalam pangum langayate giram. Even, a, you know, the person who cannot properly walk and climb the mountain by getting the mercy of him of Gurudev. So this is the point that I was stressing that how Vapu Seva is important, but at the same time, we should also focus on the Vani because through Vani, we we'll get the instructions of Gurudev. And because he was serving so nicely and so he was doing all the menial services for Ramanujacharya, so he was entitled to get all the mercy of his Gurudev. We have so many examples, you know, we can just open up Shastras and, you know, there are so many examples which prove this point that serving your Gurudev very, very menially will help you progress in your spiritual life. So same happened with Kalidas also. So when Kalidas visited Jagannath Puri Nilachal, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also bestowed great mercy on him. Text number 40. Prati dina prabhu yadi yana darishane jala karangala nagovinda yaya prabhu shane. So, what actually happened is that what mercy Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed? That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would regularly visit the temple of Jagannath. And at that time, Govinda, his personal servant, used to carry his water pot and would go with him. So uh, I'll not read all the Bengali verses in the interest of time, but few Bengali verses I'll, I'll read, but definitely we'll go through each and every translation. So on the northern side of Simhadwara, behind the door, there are 22 steps leading to the temple. And at the bottom of those steps, there is a ditch. Okay, so Mahaprabhu would go to Jagannath Puri temple every day. And Govinda will always follow him and with a water pot. And Mahaprabhu, uh, he would enter through the Simha Dwara and behind that there are 22 steps leading to the temple. And at the bottom of those steps, there is a ditch. So what Mahaprabhu would do there? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would wash his feet in his dish, in this ditch, and then he would enter the temple to see Lord Jagannath. So this is the common norm. Whenever we enter the temple, we should always wash our feet. So normally you have seen that a lot of temples will have some kind of tap, you know, where you open, you wash your feet, and then you enter the temple. Even while uh, going on the altar, we should have this habit to wash our feet and then do the spiritual bath with all the mantras, and then we enter into the altar. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered his personal servant Govinda that no one should take the water that had washed his feet. 
So this was the order given to Govinda, Mahaprabhu's personal servant, that nobody should take the water that has washed the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu. But because of the Lord's strict order, no living being could even take that water. But some of his intimate devotees, however, you know, they would just take it by some trick. Now, we should not think that this is going against the instructions of Mahaprabhu because devotees or the disciples, they are always eager to accept some remnants from the spiritual master. So though Mahaprabhu, out of humility, he says that, you know, nobody should accept uh, the water that has washed my lotus feet, but some intimate devotees, they don't want to give the chance, so they just accept it by, you know, some trick. But what happened? Ekatina Prabhu Taha Pada Parikshalite Kali Dasa Ashi Taha Pati Lenahate. One day, what happened that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was washing his feet at that place, and Kalidas came and accepted, you know, extended his palm to take that water. So Govinda is washing the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu, and beneath that, Kalidas was, you know, he was. Uh, cupping up his hand, you know, and uh, to his palm, and he was accepting that water. And what he did, he drank one palmful, then the second, and then the third. Eka Anjali, Dui Anjali, Thina Anjali Pila. You know, three times he drank the water uh, that has washed the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu. Tave Mahaprabhu Tanre Nisheda Karila. And after that third, when he was about to take the fourth, Mahaprabhu said, enough, you know, I, he forbade him to drink more. And what Mahaprabhu said, do not act in this way anymore. I have fulfilled all your desire as far as possible. Now you do, just don't, you know, be so much greedy of taking all that. Relax, you know, you have had enough now. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the most exalted, omniscient, supreme personality of Godhead. And therefore, he knew that Kalidas, in the core of the heart, had full faith in Vaishnavas. So Mahaprabhu knew, actually, that, you know, uh, how Kalidas is and how wonderful Vaishnava he himself is and how he would always respect all the Vaishnavas. So Mahaprabhu knew the heart. He is sitting as the Paramatma in the heart of everybody. So he knew the heart of Kalidas and therefore he allowed him to accept the water that has washed the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu. Because of this quality, Mahaprabhu was very satisfied with him, uh, with mercy not attainable by anyone else. So in the 39, we read, right, that he, Mahaprabhu bestowed him all the mercy upon him. So this is the mercy that when nobody was allowed to take water, Mahaprabhu allowed Kalidas to accept that water that has washed his lotus feet. Okay, and then... Okay, this is we have done. Yeah. So what happened after that is that uh, Mahaprabhu allowed him. Then on the uh, southern side, okay, now we'll stop here a little bit and we'll see that what it is actually to wash the lotus feet. It is very, very important, very, very important when your spiritual master comes to your home or wherever you get to see or meet your spiritual master. And if you get a chance to wash his lotus feet, well, we should always do this. We should always do this. We should always wash the lotus feet of our spiritual master and we should honor that water, okay? It's sometimes, you know, people are hesitant taking the water that has washed the feet of your spiritual master and they what they'll do, they just sprinkle on their head. It's good to sprinkle on your head. It's very good. But at the same time, we should also honor it without any doubt, because this has become now charanamrita. It's an amrit that is flowing through the feet of our spiritual master or the pure devotees, right? So we should not hesitate, not an iota of doubt is, should come in our mind, because uh, as per our convic conviction, the transformation will take place. Okay, so this is it, it, it goes directly proportional. The more conviction you have, the more transformation of heart will take place. The less conviction, if we honor that water with some doubt, well, 
it's a time for us to work on our own self because transformation will not happen 100%. So we should really honor that water and at the same time we should sprinkle. Now, again, it also has two things, right? That yes, literally we should honor that water, but figuratively also we should figuratively washing the lotus feet of spiritual master is that our humility it depicts the humility of a person who is washing the lotus feet that we should become humble because washing somebody's feet and honoring that even if you are sprinkling it requires the smash of our ego if our ego is high well it's very difficult to wash somebody's feet so when we wash the lotus feet of our spiritual master and accept it or sprinkle it and then drink it, you know, honor it, literally, yes, figuratively, that depicts our humility. We should be humble enough to do this kind of service. In this regard, I was, I'll just share one thing about uh, Shruta Kirti Prabhu, what he, you know, once he shared that, uh, once what happened that Prabhupada, he went to some Berkeley temple and there were a lot of disciples. So we all know that Prabhupada uh, literally walked an extra mile for every one of us, you know, for especially for his initial disciples, because they were all Westerners. They didn't have any idea about the etiquettes, about the Vedic system. So Prabhupada has to teach everything. You know, especially in, during the initiations also, sometimes Prabhupada has to tell the disciples, now you have to bow down to me. You know, no spiritual master will say that because, uh, you know, it's they, because spiritual master think that they are doing it on behalf of Prabhupada. But Prabhupada, uh, you know, he taught in order to teach them, they'll say, now you pay obeisances to me. Now you pay obeisances to the Lordships. He has to teach every step to them. This is how the etiquettes you should follow. So once Prabhupada, you know, Shruta Kirti Prabhu mentions that he went to that Berkeley, that place actually in Berkeley, in one of the devotees' home. That was that time there was no temple there. So you know, Prabhupada asked, you know, a few devotees that is there any prashadam? Bring me some fruit. And uh, devotee said, and they started running that, okay, let's get some fruit. So just see how Prabhupada himself have to ask for. And then at the same time, Prabhupada said, get some water also and a towel. So then they all went and they brought the water in a pitcher, in a jug, and they also brought a towel. And they were thinking, why Prabhupada needs all this? And then Prabhupada said, now wash my feet wash my feet and then dry up, wipe up with this towel. And then Prabhupada, and because it was instructions of Prabhupada, all the disciples did it. Then Prabhupada said, this is the proper way to honor a guest. And then what to speak of a spiritual master? If your spiritual master who is Sakshad Hari, who is the representative of the Supreme Lord, if he comes, well, this is the proper etiquette. What we should do? We should first of all, make a proper space. When as soon as the spiritual master comes, the very first act should be prostrated obeisances. We should immediately bow down. Then we should uh, just offer him a very nice place to sit. And then we should offer him a flower garland. Then we should also uh, wash his lotus feet. And at the same time, if get a chance, then we should perform arati. We should do guru puja. Because now your spiritual master is right in front of you. So this is a proper etiquette. Then all the devotees, because the disciples, they were very simple hearted, right? So they asked Prabhupada that what's the importance of washing the, this feet? Then Prabhupada told that shows the humility of a disciple that will smash your ego at the same time. That's going to relax your spiritual master. Because after a journey, uh, when somebody comes, you know, you can experience that, you know, when you have a very long journey, what we, we always come and best is to wash your feet uh, with some warm water. If we put it, we feel a lot of relaxation. That's what Prabhupada said, that it refreshes the whole body, it revives the whole body, it regenerates the whole body.
So just washing the feet helps a lot. So therefore, this is the proper etiquette and you should wash the feet. So, you know, uh, this way, you know, he taught the standard of the Vedic etiquette to with the practical, with a practical application to all his disciples. So this is, you know, I was just remembering that how important it is that we should follow the instructions of our spiritual master because that's really going to help us in our Krishna conscious path. And Prabhupada did a lot. Right now, you know, because Prabhupada and his disciples are so well trained, so the generation, this present generation is well trained, you know, because they have seen, they have seen so many years now. But previously when Prabhupada came to West, there were no devotees, right? Prabhupada right started from the scratch and he has to teach everything to his disciples. But because the disciples were so humble, so sweet-hearted, so simple-hearted, they accepted whatever Prabhupada asked without any doubt and without any question. They accepted it. That's how we all should be. Without any questioning our spiritual master, we should always follow their instructions. So now moving on to verse number 50. On the southern side, behind the above 22 steps is a deity of Lord Narsingadev, and it is on the left as one goes up to the steps towards the temple. Now this I can just read it because I have no realization as such because unfortunately I have never got a chance to visit Jagannath Puri, so I don't know. But at the same time, I'll take this opportunity to all the Vaishnavas to please pray so that one day I can go and you know see Lord Jagannath through my conditioned eyes. And of course, Lord Nishingadev. So here Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is mentioning that on the southern side behind the above those 22 steps that we read before, there is a deity of Lord Nishingadev and it is on the left as one goes up the steps towards the temples. So on the left hand side is the deity of Lord Nishingadev. So what Mahaprabhu would do? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would always pay his obeisances with the deity on the left side. Now this is also one of the etiquette. When we enter into the temple, uh, how we should enter? The very first thing we should always, whenever we enter the temple, whether somebody is there or somebody is not there, we should offer our obeisances immediately while entering to the temple by saying vancha kalpa tarubischa kripa sindhuva evacha patita nam bhavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo nama. Because first of all, we should pay obeisances to the Vaishnavas and then we should pay obeisances to Prabhupada and then we pay obeisances to the Lordships. And while paying obeisances to the Lordships, we should always keep it in our mind that we should pay obeisances in such a manner that the deities should be always on our left side. Right? So the left side, you know, our left side should be the deities. So sideways, not straight, but sideways we should always try to offer obeisances. And that's what Mahaprabhu is teaching. Mahaprabhu is saying, Ch Chaitanya, uh, Krishna Skaviraj Goswami is saying that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his left side towards the deity offered obeisances to Lord Narsingadev. And as he pro proceeded towards the temple, he recited the following verses again and again while offering obeisances. Now, this is also very, very important instruction that yes, when we pay obeisances, we should always first say the Pranam Mantra of the deities whether it's Radha Shamasundar, Radha Madan Mohan, Radha Gopinath, or uh, Radha Govinda Dev. And if you know we don't know the Pranam Mantra, then at least we can just say Jai or Glories to what's the name of the deities. Are. But at the same time, while paying obeisances, we should always recite some verses from Bhagavatam or from Chaitanya Charitamrita or from scriptures or from our own heart. We should offer our prayers. This is very, very important and it has been taught by us, to us by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would pay obeisances to Lord Narsingadev and he would recite verse. And what verse he would recite? 
नमस्ते नरसिंहाय प्रलादलादायिने हिरण्याकाशी पूर्वक्षलचंकान खालाय इतो न सिंह पर तो न सिंह यतो यतो यामी तो न सिंह बाहिर न सिंह हृदय न सिंह न सिंह मदिम शरण प्रपदे This is from Narsingha Puran. That's what Prabhupada writes. These two verses are from Narsingha Puran. So see how even Mahaprabhu is following the, this whole protocol that we should recite verses. You know, when whenever we get a chance to pay obeisances to the lordships, then we should also recite verses from Shrimad Bhagavatam or some Vedic literatures from the shastras, and this way we should offer our obeisances. So not what, now what Mahaprabhu is saying. Namaste Nara Singh Hai Hai. Obeisances to uh, the Lordship who is Nara Singh Hai Hai, who is Nara, who is half man and half lion. Nara Singh Hai Hai. Nara Hari. Hari also means. What does the word Hari means? One who steals, right? That's what Hari is. But Hari also means lion. Lion, right? Hari also means lion. Hari shabda nana arthe dui mukhetam. There are many meanings of Hari. Sarva amangal hare prema diye hare man. So these are the two beautiful meanings that Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says that sarva amangal hare. You know, it takes away all the inauspiciousness and prema diye hare man. And it gives prema, it gives Krishna prema. That's the meaning of Hari. But Hari Shabda Nana Arte. There are many meanings. And one of the meaning of Hari is lion. That's why Lord Narsingha Dev is also known as Nara Hari. And our Mahaprabhu is also known as Gaura Hari, the golden lion. Right? So he's saying Namaste Narasim Haya. Pralat Halad Daine. Pralat means Pralad Maharaj. Halad means pleasure. Right? That's why we say Haladini Shakti. Radharani is Haladini Shakti. She is a so Prahalad. Now Halad means bliss, right? Or pleasure. And Prahalad means one who is already in bliss. Prahalad. His name is Prahalad, right? Prahalad Maharaj. His name is Prahalad because he's always in bliss. Now this Narshinga, yeah, this uh, Narshinga Dev, he is giving bliss. He is giving halad to prahalad. He is giving bliss to someone who is already in bliss, right? Daine. Daine means to give. So prahalad, halad, daine. Hiranya Kashipur Vakshaha. Hiranya Kashipur, the, the father of prahalad Maharaj, and he is tearing off the chest, Vakshaha, of Hiranya Kashipur. How? Shila Tanka Nakhalaye. Just like, you know, you hammer, when you hammer a nail, you need a, you know, a chisel and a stone, you hammer it, right? So this way, uh, um, uh, Dev through his nails, he's not using any weapons. He's just through his nails, he's tearing off the chest of Hiranyakashipu, like a chisel cutting the stone. Right? This is what it says. Itho Narshinga par itho Narshinga. Narshinga Dev is here. Narshinga Dev is on the opposite side. Meaning he's everywhere. He's all pervading. Yato yato yami tato Narshinga. And Mahaprabhu is saying, wherever I go, I see Lord Narshinga Dev. Because he's present everywhere. He's all pervading. Bahir Narshinga, Hridaye Narshinga. He is outside as well as inside. Narshinga Madim Sharanam Prapade. Therefore, I take shelter of Lord Narshinga Dev, who is the original personality of Godhead. So this is the real prayer that Mahaprabhu sings. Now, in this regard also, I'll just say one thing that how Lord Narsingha Dev was introduced to Iskon because it says that like Iskon is actually into Madhuri Abhav, where we have this worship of Radha and Krishna and the worship of Gauranitai, Gauranatraj. So that's what Prabhupada established. 
But once what happened, that Prabhupada's health was deteriorating and all the disciples, they had no idea what to do. And they started praying, they started chanting, they, chant, they started chanting extra rounds, they started praying to the Lordships. And then Prabhupada said, that if you really want to pray for me, and if you really want that I should stay in this planet for more years, then start worshiping and start saying this prayer about Lord Nashingadev. So this is how the Arati of Lord Nashingadev was introduced. That's why after every main Arati, whether it's Mangala Arati, whether it's Boga Arati, whether it's four o'clock evening Arati, or whether it's, uh, uh, you know, Gaura Arati or whether it's Shayan Arati, we always immediately after that Arati, we sing Narshinga Dev because Prabhupada said that Narshinga Dev is a Vignaharta, right? He takes away all the obstacles, but obstacles not on the material path, but obstacles on our spiritual path. So Narshinga Dev takes away all the uh, vignas, all the obstacles from our spiritual path. And that's what we want, right? So that's why Prabhupada said that you can worship, you can pray to Lord Nashingadev, but add one line, if you so desire. So this is also what Prabhupada taught us, that when we should pray for somebody, we should not intervene in um, in Krishna's plan, because Krishna's plan is always perfect. Our plans are not perfect because we we are not that far sighted. We only see a short distance, but Krishna has a perfect plan. So uh, Prabhupada introduced and he said that start singing this Nashinga Arti, start praying to Lord Nashinga Dev, because he is the one who, who can give protection and just add if you so desire. So this is how this whole Nashinga Arati is being introduced by Prabhupada. And la la lately, you know, he also added this uh, Tavakara Kamalavare, you know, that Dashavatar Sotra by Jayadev Goswami. So these two verses and then one, one verse from that Jayadev Goswami's Dashavatar Sotra, this whole Nashinga Arati came into being. So Prabhupada introduced actually, and then devotees started following. So what happened next, that after uh, having paying obeisances to Lord Narsingha Dev, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited the temple of Lord Jagannath. Then he returned to his residence, finished his noon duties and took his lunch. So the normal routine he followed. Now what Khalidas, he was standing outside the door and he was expecting the remnants of food from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he was always relying and you know, staying on that remnants. And knowing this, because Mahaprabhu know, so he gave an indication to Govinda that go and give my remnants to Kalidas. So this is how, when Mahaprabhu came to know that how Kalidas is, you know, he is respecting all the Vaishnavas. So Mahaprabhu also showed his causeless, immense mercy on Kalidas. First letting him to drink water that has washed his lotus feet, and now indicating Govinda to give Kalidas my remnants. Govinda understood all the indications of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and therefore he immediately delivered the remnants to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sorry, food to Kalidas. Taking the remnants of the food of Vaishnavas is so valuable that it induced Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to offer Kalidas his supreme mercy. So how important it is because Krishna says Aham Bhakta Paradhina. Krishna says that I am you know, not independent. The same Krishna who is called Swarat, who has been referred as Swarat in uh, uh, the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, the same Krishna himself says that I am a Swatantra. I am not independent. I am dependent on whom? On my devotees. So those who worship my devotees are more dear to me than those who worship me directly. And seeing this, Mahaprabhu also, when he saw that how wonderfully, uh, you know, Kalidas is serving the Vaishnavas because he used to take gifts also for all of them. And at the same time, he'll always hanker to get their remnants. So Mahaprabhu also bestowed his supreme mercy on Kalidas. Therefore, giving up hatred and hesitation. This is Krishnadas Gaviraj Goswami is all in, is instructing to people like us who are reading Chaitanya Charita Amrita, that give up all hatred and hesitation, which is very, very important. Try to eat the remnants of the food of Vaishnavas and you will thus be able to achieve your desired goal of life. So we should give up hatred 
and hesitation. There should not be an iota of doubt while honoring the remnants that is being honored by the Vaishnavas. And at the same time, we should give up all kind of hatred. Enviousness has no place in spiritual world. This hatred will lead us down. So we should really get rid of this hatred and doubt this hesitation. Krishnera uchishta haya maha prasad nama bhakta shesha haila maha maha prasad akhyana. So what he's saying, the remnants of food offered to Lord Krishna is called maha prasad because now it has become maha prasad. But after the same maha prasad, when it has been taken and honored by a pure devotee, then the remnants becomes maha maha prasad. You know, it, it gets elevated. So it's now Maha Maha Prasad. So first when the when Krishna honors that, that bhoga, then it becomes Prashad. Right? It becomes Maha Prashad. Actually, uh, yeah, it's Maha Prashad when it comes directly from Krishna's plate. But when the same Prashad, that Maha Prashad is mixed in all the other, you know, the cooking vessels, then it becomes Prashad because now it has been diluted. You know, you can say that. But uh, it becomes prashad, it becomes remnant. Uh, but directly from Krishna's plate, if something you get, well, it is Mahaprasad. But when the same plate, when we offer, you know, especially during the Vyasa Puja, what happens is we first offer uh, to the Lordships and then for the same bowls, you know, is transferred to the bowls for the for Prabhupada or for uh, our spiritual master. And then we take that plate and as it is, we offer it to our spiritual master or to Prabhupada. Then it becomes Maha Maha Prashad, right? So this is what Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami is also saying. 60th verse, very, very important verse, worth memorizing. Bhakta pada dhuli ar, bhakta pada jal, bhakta bhukta avashesha, Tina Mahabal. So now Krishnas Kaviraj Goswami is basically concluding this pastime of Kalidas while saying that how Kalidas was so, so, you know, he would always hanker to accept the remnants of the food that is being honored by the Vaishnavas. Then he would always be uh, hankering for the dust of the lotus feet. And then he would also hanker for the water that has washed the lotus feet. So therefore, by uh, giving this example of Kalidas, now Kaviraj Goswami is teaching all of us, all the readers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that Bhakta Pada Dhuli, the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee, Bhakta Pada Jal, the water that has washed the lotus feet of a pure devotee, Bhakta Bhukta Avashesha, you know, the the food that has been honored by the devote, the, the devotee, that's avashesha, that's a remnants, tina mahabal. They are very, very powerful substance. Don't take them for granted, period. Don't take them for granted. So the dust of the feet of a devotee, the water that has washed the feet of a devotee and the remnants of food that is left by a devotee are three very, very powerful substance. Eitina seva haite Krishna prema haya puna puna sarva shastre pukhari akaya. Now Kaviraj Goswami is saying, well, this is not my speculation. I'm not saying out of any my mental speculation. By rendering all these three, bhakta pada dhuli, bhakta pada jal, bhakta bhukta vashesha. One attains the supreme goal of ecstatic love for Krishna. And this is, he's saying, I'm not saying out of my mental concoction. It is all revealed scriptures that is loudly declared again and again. Puna puna sarva shastra. You know, puna puna again and again, this has been quoted in all the shastras that how important it is that we have to accept the dust, the water, the food that has been offered to the Vaishnavas. Tata bara bara kahi suna bhakta gana vishwa sakariya kare eithi na shrevana. What he's saying, therefore, my dear devotees, please hear from me, for I insist again and again. Now, this is Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami saying, please keep faith in these three and render service to them without hesitation. There should not be an iota of doubt while accepting any of three of them. 
तीना हाईते कृष्णा नाम प्रेमेरा उल्लासा कृष्णेरा प्रसाद तते साक्षी कलाद काली दासा फ्रॉम दिस थ्री वन अचीव द हाईएस्ट गोल ऑफ लाइफ दैट इज लव ऑफ गॉड एंड एक्सटैटिक लव फॉर कृष्णा एंड दिस इज द ग्रेटेस्ट मर्सी ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्णा एंड हु इज द एविडेंस हु इज द प्रमाण कालीदास हिमसेल्फ इज अ प्रमाण बिकॉज़ व्हेन ही सर्वड वैष्णवस ही गॉट इमेंस मर्सी ऑफ कृष्णा who is lord shri chaitanya mahaprabhu nila chale prabhu rahe ei mate khali das mahakripak kaila alaksh alakshite in this way shri chaitanya mahaprabhu remained at jagannath puri nila chal and he invisibly bestowed great mercy upon khali das so this is how through khali das krishna das kaviraj ko swami is instructing all of us that we should follow in the footsteps and we should always uh you know take hanker for the remnants that is been uh, on of honored by the pure devotees then we should always take the dust of the lotus feet of the pure devotees and we should always be hankering to get the water that has washed the lotus feet of pure devotees which is very very important even uh you know uh, you know in shrimad bhagavatam also that verse comes right uh, mahashyam pada pada rajo abhishekam you know that uh, we should always uh, wash the lotus feet of the lord or the pure devotee which has been really it has been glorified throughout shrimad bhagavatam now the question comes that who is a pure devotee how do we know shall we just take the remnants of anybody or we can wash the lotus feet of anybody or we can just take the dust of the lotus feet of anybody because when we take the remnants now the point here comes is that when we take the remnants of uh, anybody you know uh, actually we t- when when we allow someone to take our remnants uh, we give our little bit of spiritual credits and we take their credits you know that's how it happens so especially during initiation when we take when we touch the lotus feet of our spiritual master you know it is said that you know we give our own sense to our spiritual master so spiritual master very humbly accepts it accepts all our sinful reactions and when we take the mahaprasad maha maha prasad of our spiritual master so you know we also give our own karma karmic reactions to our spiritual master so that's what also we should be very very careful that we cannot take everybody's you know we should be really careful that we should not give our remnants to everyone you know who are we actually because when spiritual master gives definitely his sadhana is on a very high level but uh, considering our own sadhana you know we should not let anybody take anything from our plate so we should be really careful but when it comes to taking from others uh, well we should take kalidas you know he took without considering whether the person is from a shudra or a brahmana or an advanced or a neophyte devotee doesn't matter we should always take and we should also not allow everybody can take the dust from our feet and should not touch our feet that's also is very very important but when it comes for a pure devotee you know when we say that you should always take the dust of the pure devotee we should always take the water that has washed the feet of the pure devotees then who is actually pure devotee and in this regard you know there's a very beautiful words mahat sevam dwaram ahar vimuktes tamo dwaram yoshitam sangi sangam now he describes later that who are pure devotees mahantas te samachitta prashanta vimaranaya suhridaya sadavo ye this is a verse from shrimad bhagavatam canto 5 chapter 5 verse number 2 because somebody can ask actually who is a pure devotee how will i recognize that is a pure devotee well first of all we have no adhikar to judge we should not be judgmental but at the same time there are many definitions given of a pure devotee or a pure vaishnava like mahaprabhu himself games when the devotees from kulingram used to come 
So Mahaprabhu told them, you know, one year he told them that anybody who chants Krishna's name is a devotee, you know, he's a pure devotee, he's a Vaishnava. Then he says, next year he says that anybody, you know, who enthuses you, who inspires you to chant or do some service, well, that's, he's a Vaishnava, he's a good pure devotee. Then third time, third year, Mahaprabhu gave that definition that seeing somebody when you get inspired to do devotional service or to chant the holy name he is a pure devotee right so mm -hmm. mahaprabhu gave these definitions of a vaishnava but here in bhagavatam also it has been given that who is a pure devotee he is samachitta samachitta means who is who is who sees everyone as a spiritual identity who doesn't you know discriminate then Prashanta, who is very, very peaceful. Then Vimanayava, the, who is without anger, who is very Vinaya, he is very uh, sublime, very humble in his mood, you know. Then that person is a pure devotee. Then Sukhrida, who is the well-wisher of everyone. Sadhavohi, who is a who is a sadhu, you know, without having any external, who is not duplicit, you know, having no other abominable behavior. So that person is a pure devotee. So we should always you know, try to serve. Now somebody can ask, where I can find? I can I can find pure devotee. Somebody can say, oh, I don't have that much of association uh, where I, I don't have any congregation and I cannot, you know, say that, you know, that person is a pure devotee or not. Then how can we uh, render our services? Well, in this regard, I'll just tell you, give you one analogy and then we we'll end up. I know I took a little over time. So the analogy, what I want to give is what my Gurudev actually taught that yes, not everyone can be a pure devotee, but we know that Prabhupada is a pure devotee, right? That we all agree that Prabhupada is, was a pure devotee, is a pure devotee, I should say, sorry. So we should try to serve a devotee who is little elevated to us. Right? We should not even go for a pure devotee, but rather we should try to serve a Vaishnava, a devotee who we know is elevated from us. So when we serve that devotee and that devotee is serving a higher than his devotee, then that devotee is serving higher than him. So this way the lineage reaches to Prabhupada. Right? And we all Prabhupada is a pure devotee. So when we connect ourselves to that lineage, we are serving a pure devotee. It's not that we have to specifically go and serve uh, our spiritual master or Prabhupada. No. If we are serving an advanced God brother of ours and he is serving oh, counselor or mentor, then can somebody please mute? I'm just about to end. Thank you. Yes, Mother. So then, uh, you know, uh, he serves his mentor, then mentor serves his mentor, then mentor serves his counselor, and counselor finally is so much uh, into the seva of his spiritual master, and definitely the spiritual master is serving Prabhupada. So this way, when we are connected to the lineage, mm -hmm. we are serving Prabhupada. We are serving pure devotee. Example, a telescope. We have no adhikar or no eligibility to see the sun or a star in the sky. right? But when we use a telescope, we are able to get a glimpse of that. We are able to see, you know, how it is possible because the telescope has lenses, multiple layers of lenses, right? So one lens is there, still the vision is blurred another lens, another lens, another lens, you know. And finally, when the series of lenses are there and when we see through telescope, we are able to see that object, right? So this is how this works in our Krishna conscious life also. When we serve somebody who is little elevated to us, who inspires us, who enthuses us, who gives us the right direction, no matter that person is a pure devotee or not, Right. But if we are somehow getting inspiration to do some kind of devotional service to lordships, you know, that person we should try to serve. This is the bottom line.
So when we serve that person who is really sincere, not duplicit, but who himself or herself is engaged in some service and at the same time inspires us also, enthuse us also, directs us also to do some kind of service, we should render service to them. And then through this various multiple layers of lenses, multiple layers of those advanced devotees, we will be able to see the object through telescope and we will be able to serve Srila Prabhupada. That's what is serving, right? Yes, all three these thing, things are very, very important. Bhakta Pada Dhuli, Bhakta Pada Jal, Bhakta Bhukta Avashesha. It is very, very important. But what is the most important is to serve the mission of Srila Prabhupada. That is the highest importance. And that we can do only when we serve devotees who are little elevated to us. And then they can serve those devotees who are basically we are serving Prabhupada's mission. And Prabhupada's mission is that preach. Preach Krishna conscious, make everybody Krishna conscious. Chare dekho, tare kaho, Krishna upadesh, right? That's what we have to do. And at the same time, cooperate, cooperate. Prabhupada, when he left his body, uh, I should say, when he left this planet, you know, his final instruction was that cooperate. If you want to show your love to me, you should cooperate. Cooperate among ourselves. And this cooperation can come when we give up hatred, when we give up enviousness. And finally, through humility, through submission, try to avoid any conflict as far as possible. Thinking that who are we? I'm just an insignificant person. You know, and let me take this opportunity to take part in this mission of Prabhupada, to take part in the mission of Mahaprabhu. Let me be an instrument. If we develop that mood, well, we'll always have the serving attitude, serving service towards our seniors. But at the same time, we should also serve those who are neophytes, those who are really new to Krishna consciousness, not thinking that I am the one who brought this person. No, that should not be the attitude. Attitude should be that, you know, let me give that, in, whatever I received, let me distribute. This is the generosity. We should not be miser, right? Not whatever. Okay, this is the good that I got. Let me keep it to my own self. No, that should not be the mood. So this way we should also associate with the neophytes, those who are new to Krishna consciousness, not thinking that I know too much so I can guide you. No, that arrogance should not be there. But the arrogance should not be there, but what the mood should be, what the attitude should be, that I got benefit, let the whole world also get benefit. In that mood, we should also associate with the neophytes. Then we should also associate with our peers, with our those who have come in Krishna consciousness with us, you know, because that way, when we are rubbed with that ego, with that conflicts, that will make us shine even better. Some people say that, you know, oh, there is so much politics in the temple and, you know, people talk this and that and, you know, let me avoid going to the temple and let me focus on my own sadhana. Well, that won't help enough, you know, because how the diamond emerges into a shining diamond can only be possible when the diamond goes through a lot of pain and being crushed through machines, right? How the gold shines when the gold is put into that fire, the fire, the heat, when, the, when it is put in that fire, that heat, then it shines better. So this fire, this heat is the conflict, is what we get in this Khan temples, in all other temples, in the association, in the congregation, but we should not stay away from them. We should stay with them. We should stay with them no matter how much it pinches, no matter how much it affects us, but still stay in that close association because that's going to help us rub us back and forth and will make us shine even better. Example is given of a porcupine. You know, there is a creature, porcupine, there is a lot of, you know, pricky uh, things they have on their body. So the porcupine are normally into the cold areas where there is too much of cold. Then, uh, but they need warmth, right? They need warmth. So what they do, they have to, all the porcupines have to come together in order to get that warmth. But when they come together, because of that spiky, you know, pricky things on their body, their body also get hurt 
because one porcupine is touching another, you know, definitely the body gets hurt. But if they get separated, they'll die. They'll die because of that cold weather. But so they have to come together. They have to all porcupines should come together in order to get the warmth. So what they do is that they come together, no matter if it pricks, but at least they are saved. At least their life is saved. At least they are together. They get that warmth. So seeing that example, seeing, following that example, we should also try to stay in the close association of our peers, take the guidance from the seniors, help the neophytes to distribute what, what benefit we got, let the whole world get benefit. And third is that to our peers, you know, even if there is some conflict, still stay together because this association will really last longer and will make us stronger. So this association is very, very important. And no matter how many conflicts it may come, but behold, we should understand that this is going to make us shine better because it's going to smash our ego and will make us more humble. And when we become humble, well, we can chant better. So on that note, I'd like to stop here. I'm sorry I took long and sorry for all that happened in between. But uh, let's thank you so much, Pro Sangeet Mataji. Uh, the apology should come from my side. Sorry Some for the break in between. And thank you for the very brilliant class, extremely wow. wonderful examples and explanations that uh, make sense. And it was very easy to understand. And we from you. Thank you so much, Mataji, for the detailed explanation. And the explanation towards the end with the analogies and examples, that was very, very helpful. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you so much, Preeti Vilasni, Mataji. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak something which can only benefit myself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Kirti Dasanare Mataji, for such a beautiful class, explaining so many about the remunerance of the prashadam, how to serve the spiritual master, and how Prabhupada introduced uh, Nasi Maharaja. So many beautiful, beautiful points. Thank you so much, Mataji. So can we have some question and answers, Mataji? Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Please, Mataji, go ahead. Um, Kirtida Mataji, I have a question. Yes, Mataji, go ahead. Um, I have a question that in the beginning you said when everything fails, like chanting, um, whatever you said, everything fails. You said that the prashadam work for you. So in, can you elaborate, uh, like for me also, everything is failing. So I like your point, but can you like share with me in a few words? Yeah, thank you so much Neha Mataji. First of all, I would really express my gratitude for your association. Uh, if I've said that, then I'll apologize because I my point was not that if chanting fails, you know, chanting can never fail. You know, my point was not that. What I want to stress is that some people are not in the position where they accept chanting wholeheartedly. Right. Okay. You right. might have come across when you give them beads, you know, they are a little reluctant in taking up the beads and chanting the Mahamantra. Then definitely our philosophy, which is the best, the best I should say, but people are not keen in hearing that philosophy. They want to go on to their own path, their own agendas, their own way. You know, they have their own way. So they don't want to follow or hear the philosophy. You might have come across a lot of people, at least I have come across, that they are not keen, they are not interested in chanting, neither they are interested in learning shastras or learning some, you know, some Vedas or, you know, some philosophy. They are not interested. But then how to bring them? How to bestow mercy on them? How to make them also the recipient of Krishna's mercy? But if they are not into chanting, if they are not into learning the Shastras, then how to bring them? To them, to them, to bring them so that they can also be the recipient of Krishna's mercy. Prabhupada says, feed them prasadam. If nothing works, prasadam will work. That was the point. Feed them prasadam. Because when they eat, when they honor that prasadam, then the transformation will happen, will happen. No matter what, it will happen. But the point is that we should have that faith. 
Mm. Person who is honoring or not is is have faith or not doesn't matter, but we should have that faith that yes, I'm feeding that person prasadam, it will work miracles. Maybe you know it's it it's not an instant thing that today they ate something prasadam, next day their heart got transformed. No, it may take time. It may take time, but it will work. It may take a lifetime also, Mataji. It's not that you know we can expect immediate result, but start. We can at least give them prasadam. That's going to build their agyat sukriti through which you know they will become devotee. Not in this life, maybe next. But prasadam works. It works. Prasadam, you mean Mataji, something sweet like a kheer? Yeah, or... yeah whatever, whatever. You know, okay. I'll give you my live example. I know we are on Zoom, but and it's recorded. But I like to share that. You know. Uh, when I came into Krishna consciousness, I was chanting, but uh, my husband was not. My husband was not chanting. And uh, I told him a lot of times, but uh, he was a little reluctant. He didn't take up that uh, easily. And uh, when it comes to learning the Shastras or reciting Bhagavad Gita shlokas or reading Bhagavad Gita or reading Bhagavatam, you know, uh, his time schedule was such, he was so busy in his office work that he didn't get a time to read with all this to me. Then I asked my one of my mentor, uh, my Bhakti Riksha leader, that how can I do that? Because we were taking onion and garlic also at that time, uh, you know, at home, though we were not honoring any non-veg items, but onion garlic was still going on. Then I asked one of my counselor that what should I do, you know, how can I, because see, again, I told you, you cannot preach to your relatives. I, I, being a subordinate, being a wife, I cannot, you know, order my husband to do, you know, all these things. So then he said that politely I can handle it, but that, that was not working. So then he said that uh, even if he wants to eat something of onion and garlic, then uh, just make, make it for him no matter what. But just, you know, uh, make something for Krishna, because at that time I have some pictures of Radha and Krishna. So he said, make something uh, exclusively for Krishna and or offer it to Krishna and then make sure your husband eats that prasad. So sometimes I'll make halwa, sometimes I'll just make rice and sometimes I'll make some ghee, some sweet because that doesn't require onion and garlic. You know, I'll make some items and then I'll make sure that my husband eats. And it worked. It worked. Within six months, my Prabhu started chanting 16 rounds. And within a year, we both took initiation from our Guru Dev. Mm -hmm. So that's what my point was, that prashadam works. Again, it's just a matter of faith. And definitely it's the matter of a karma of a person. Because if the karmic reactions of the person who is honoring the prashadam is so much, then it will take time. It will take time, right? Uh, to get rid of, because you have to get rid of those karmic reactions. And then you can come on to the point where you can accept Krishna consciousness, right? So maybe his karmic reactions were less and then prashadam was working and then you know, within six months, everything came to normal. But for some, you know, it takes little extra, right? But prashadam works. It, it, it works like a miracle. Now, when my Prabhu was eating, he was not having any faith in that. You know, he was just eating because I was telling him to honor it, to eat, to, to accept it. So he was accepting, he was eating it. But my conviction was full, not in prashadam, but in the words of my Shiksha Guru. Because he said, so I thought when he's saying, you know, I'll let me follow blindly. So whatever he said, I'll make anything exclusively for the Lordships. We'll offer it and then we'll make sure that everyone in the family honors it. So this is what my point was that when somebody is not ready to accept chanting or learning Shastras, then Prashadam is going to bring a lot of transformations in the heart. The point is to bring transformation in the consciousness. That shift of consciousness should be there. Only then we'll accept Krishna consciousness. So that shift of consciousness can either be chanting. Chanting works miraculously. And learning Shastras, we get a lot of intelligence. And through that, if our intelligence is good, then definitely we'll be able to curtail from our sense objects and we can focus on Krishna. But if nothing works, then prashadam works. 
that was my point. Hope that helps, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji, so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Wonderful answer, Mataji. Thank you for sharing that. Now I request Pink Yogi. Prabhuji, you can please go ahead. Yes, hi. Thank you. I just wanted to ask if the co-host can please read my personal message and send me an, an answer, please. It's been there for some time. Is it uh, in the chat box, Mataji? Nothing is there? Yeah. Which message? Please send me a direct message. I sent okay. I sent I sent one to the to the two different Bhakti Sangha Japa groups and one to to the host, to the speaker, yes. I got it. Your question is Vapu Seva. What is that? Vapu Seva means physically serving a Vaishnava. Physically serving your spiritual master, like cooking for him, cleaning, washing his clothes, or massaging his lotus feet, or uh, you know, anything like physically when we serve our spiritual master, that is Vapu Seva. And Vani Seva is hearing the instructions. You get that? Yes, thank you. But there's still, but the, I sent messages to both of the Bhakti Sangha Japa groups because I don't know which one is which. So if those two can please read it and write me the answer, please, before we end. Yeah, that I don't know. Somebody if knows, I don't know who. Hare Krishna Mataji, I am one of the co-hosts and on Bhakti Sangha, but I don't have any message in mind, Mataji. Okay, then Mataji, maybe, you know, you would have posted before the call was disconnected, so that's why we lost all the messages. No, I resent it after we came back. Okay, but now none of us is able to see, so if you don't mind, either you can personally type it again for me. Uh, you can send direct message to me, then I'll I'll definitely try to answer if possible. Sorry about that. Sorry, Mataji. Now I request Harita Mataji. You can please go ahead, Mataji, in the meanwhile. Uh, Hare Krishna, Mataji. My dandavats to all the assembled devotees, you and Lord Krishna. Uh, Mataji, that was really nice hearing about the like accepting the remnants, serving the you know taking the um, you know the dust of the devotees and how we need to serve lord uh, and how what what steps we need to follow uh, and i like the incident what you told about your husband now you know the same thing is happening with me <laughs> I want him to seriously come into Krishna consciousness. He never says no, whatever I do, but um, but still, like we, we still eat yeah, onion garlic because he wants it. But at some point of time, maybe I will also try what you have tried and keep on like uh, offering the, uh, you know, prasadam uh, to the God and the same, I will be serving him so that maybe at some point of time, he will also start chanting and you know, come totally into Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. We'll pray for you. Thank you, Harita Mataji. You can see, Mataji, that message that uh, she's asking that what is the website so she can go and look at the yesterday's video again. So, Indu Mataji, can you just uh, give the link? She is referring. Yes, Mataji, I'm sharing here. Yeah. So, Mataji, she'll be sharing. So, you can just go ahead and hear yesterday's class to get the whole link of what we discussed today. Thank you. So, are there any other devotees who have any questions or realizations to Mataji? Is she sending the link? Yeah, she yes, sent Mataji, she, sent. she has sent you the link. There you can send you the YouTube link. So there you thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your association. Hare Krishna. Go ahead, Mataji. Uh, okay. Hare Krishna Gritida Sundari Mataji. It was a wonderful lecture. Mataji, just uh, uh, I really like the analogy of the coal and diamond the coal and diamond are having the same uh, constitute but because of the extra pressure we can become a diamond so thank you for that 
uh, one more thing prabhu uh, mata ji um, as you said that we are eating the mahaprasad from our uh, vaishnav uh, senior disciples so that means that we are getting their qualities or we are getting their blessings from him that is the meaning of that yes when we accept somebody's mahaprasada we take their credits and then uh, we are going to um, have that so then in that mood we can go more and more uh, into the seva okay that's why you know we should not give a little reluctant in giving but when it comes to accepting we should accept thank you so much ma'am yeah. thank you karunika mata ji thank you mata ji in the mata ji you can please go ahead Hare Krishna, Kirti Das Sundari Mata Ji. Thank you for such a beautiful class, Mata Ji. So many uh, understood so much today that prasadam is not just the remnants of the Lord's uh, food. You know, it is mercy. That's why. Okay, now everything makes sense. Like Sri Lopra Upad calling us a prasadam moment. Definitely, there is so much of mercy here. Otherwise, we won't be able to practice anything in Krishna consciousness on our own strength. So uh, very beautiful, uh, Mata. and how you explained about uh, accepting uh, the remnants of vaishnavas what mood we should be how potent that is and even about you know how and i think you have mentioned this before the uh, the water that is offered to the lotus feet of the uh, gurus that is also very important that we honor it and not just you know sprinkle it on our uh, forehead also very beautiful about how you said that you know at the time of initiation what happens and how when uh, someone is accepting uh, prasadam we are giving our karma to you know the other vaishnava that is i mean that is scary <laughs> I, i i i really don't want anyone to you know get uh, my bad karma that's so bad hmm. thank you so much mata ji hari krishna thank you indu mata ji thank you for your association hari krishna mata ji hari krishna lakshmi mata ji uh mataji you very wonderfully explain the main three aspect of uh, getting the dust of vaishnava the remnants and also the uh, padamrita and uh, i have, i i like to get one more clarification mataji the example that you quoted that uh, ramaj ramanujacharya's disciple he did not have much knowledge on sanskrit or anything but uh, he was giving the class now uh, what i have to ask as mata ji we read gita we read bhagavatam and we attend classes also from our prabhu ji and mata ji but still we know that each and every sloka that krishna says it has a very deep meaning that we are unable to uh, understand so i want to know like how does that part work mata ji you have to can you shed some light on that that the guru gives is he empowering us to understand it or uh, how does we get that special intelligence to understand the deep meaning please shed some light on that mataji cheto darpana marjanam bhava mahata tavati nirvapanam shreya kairava chandrika vidya vadhu jeevanam this is very very important so when we chant our heart gets cleansed and at the same time vidya vadhu jeevanam that vidya that intelligence comes because she is vadhu she is vadhu of whom hari naam prabhu our hari naam prabhu has a wife wedded wife and that is intelligence that is vidya that is so when we chant when we chant the holy name with full concentration with full sincerity with utmost humility thinking ourselves to be the you know lower than the blade of grass and be more tolerant than a tree when we chant in that mood our chaito darpana marjanam our chitta our heart becomes as clear as a mirror and at the same time vidya vadhu jeevanam that vidya also bestows upon us that intelligence to understand it also comes and as far as uh, you know doing any service whether it's giving classes cleaning the temple or uh, doing deity worship or preaching or book distribution any service when it comes from the spiritual master that instructions comes from the spiritual master that empowerment comes along with it okay so when i quoted this past time of ramdas what he did was he was serving 
and at the same time he was following the instructions so when ramanujacharya told him to just preach just give class randomly at that time he had no idea right but through the instructions that empowerment comes so whenever we are into any service we should always bring it to the knowledge of our spiritual master so that we get his blessing so that we get his empowerment and we can serve it wonderfully you can serve it more nicely that's how it works hope that helps mataji yes mataji so the instruction that is given by our guru magaraj the instruction also contains the empowerment to do that particular service exactly exactly okay okay you can see the a live example of haridas thakur when he was chanting in that siddha bakula under that siddha bakula tree in jagannath puri at that time mahaprabhu came right mahaprabhu came to him and asked him that oh haridas you are always engaged in chanting you are namacharya there he there he gave this name right namacharya and he said how the insects these plants these trees how they are going to get benefit he asked this question and then haridas thakur what he said he said mahaprabhu you are asking me who am i but because now you are instructing me to answer this i know that now empowerment is coming to me this is the mood right always not reject all kind of praise it's very easy to reject all the praises if somebody tells you well you did such a nice service you do such a nice book distribution you dress so nicely you give such a wonderful classes it's very easy to reject oh who am i you know i'm not i'm nothing i'm nothing no, that's that's not the mood that's not haridas thakur did what he did he accepted it and then he told oh mahaprabhu now you have asked this question you yourself answer how please recite in my tongue and let the words come out because i have no eligibility i have no qualification whatsoever but if you have asked something if you have asked me instructed me to say something then at the same time i request you to please recite in my tongue and let the words come out the way you want it to come out so this is what the humility is this is what accepting as this, at the same time transferring it to our seniors so when somebody praises us accepted with utmost humility because through that acceptance comes the blessings from them so accept it but at the same time feel yourself with utmost humility passed it on to your seniors to your spiritual master that i am doing this service because of you gurudev because you empowered me you instructed me you empowered me so hear the credit that i received i pass it on to you so please it's yours everything is yours everything is coming to you right i am nothing i am just i am made up of your mercy right you are the only you are the cause of all causes you are the cause of all the credits i am receiving so hear all those credits and i am giving it to you so that should be the mood and through when the when gurudev instructs yes empowerment comes hope that helps so, yes yes mata ji tells a lot now please correct me mata ji if my understanding is wrong that when we get a service from guru maharaj or any devotee uh, we may think that the service is very big and i cannot do it so that is wrong because when the instruction comes automatically the empowerment comes so uh, we we will be able to do it and the second thing is when we get an uh, instruction or a service we are sometimes we should not think that it's because of my talent they are giving it to me because actually the, they they are the one who is empowering us so it is not like our talent or our intelligence or nothing from our side and also we should not say that i am not powerful or i am not cap capable to do this because we all they are giving the empowerment so is it right mataji perfect okay thank you thank you very much mataji it's such a wonderful class mataji and uh, the very grateful to you jai sachinandana hari krishna hari krishna thank you lakshmi thank you mataji for beautiful answer so is there any other devotees yes mataji if any other devotees have any other questions or realizations you can please go ahead or not we can end the call here yes mataji we can end it okay mataji thank you once again so much mataji for such an enlightening and wonderful class 
We look forward for your association in future and pay our obeisances. Vancha kalpata rupyasya krupa sindhu pya evacha patita nam pavane vyo vaishnava vyo namo namaha. Prantat Srimad Chaitanya Charitamritam ki jai Srila Prabhupad ki jai Harkes Kirtida Sundari Mataji ki jai. Ki jai. Thank you so much. Thank you Mataji. Thank you so much. So beautiful class. Very nice singing of Narshi Maharati Mataji. Thank you so much. Hari Bol, closing the call everyone. We'll meet again tomorrow. Thank you Mataji. Thank Hare you Mataji. Hare Krishna.